DuPont guilty verdicts keep piling up. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story plus P-Power. But first, on this Double Edged Stories edition of Good News Next Week, we go 200 miles north of me for a poll that showed 80% gave up prescription meds for medical pot. This via the York Dispatch, a recent survey conducted by the Center for Addictions Research in British Columbia, showed a staggering 80% of nearly 500 adult medical cannabis users polled reported giving up prescription medications in favor of marijuana. Big Pharma isn't alone in its worries, either because 52% of respondents said they gave up alcohol in favor of cannabis. Imagine having the alcohol and pharmaceutical industries working together for the singular goal of preventing a plant from legally reaching consumers. Now, it's almost time to harvest the beans, as you can see from behind me, and Frankie's showing off again on these outdoor editions of Good News Next Week. But what I'm talking about, double-edged stories here, is what we kind of called on New World Next Week, not unmitigated good news. The flip side to this is, of course, the rush is on for Big Agra to sell you GMO pot. They initially would deny it, but of course it's true. And our buddy James Corbett of Corbett Report, my co-host, co-creator of New World Next Week, and also of this show, Good News Next Week, it's spinoff, has a recent interview with Ellen Brown where they talk about just that. Big Ag wants to sell you GMO marijuana. Again, this is why the California law that they're going to vote for probably this fall is a bunch of garbage, and it's a big command and control kind of law. Very much different from the law that we did actually pass here in Oregon that's much more beneficial to the regular people where you are allowed to grow a lot and possess a lot, and it's also the industrial farming aspect of it as well. So that bill would need a lot more Oregon and a whole hell of a lot less California for it to be anything worth voting for this November. And again, one of the best parts about the deal here in Oregon is that I can still get weed from my dude who grows it legally, organically, and there ain't no middleman. And that's hopefully some kind of agorism. Our second story this week on Good News Next Week is a follow-up on something we actually talked about back in June, where we were kind of talking about different forms of power. Chile has so much solar power, they're giving it away for free. How China was working on poo power. And we talked about tofu power, but in that batch of stories, tofu power and other cool new alternative energy sources, they mentioned pea power. Now, I was intrigued by it then, and now we do actually have an update via Alpha Galileo, one of the public urinals installed this year at Glastonbury can generate enough electricity to light the cubicle's LED tubes using a system developed by scientists at the University of West England in Bristol. Quote, the technology in the prototype is based on microbial fuel cells, MFC, which, like batteries, has an anode and a cathode. This explained by Irene Marino, who's a researcher on the team, thanks to a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And there comes our double edge to this story, that again, we see the powers that shouldn't be in obviously eugenics-obsessed, multi-generational serial killers like the Gates Foundation and their ilk. These are obviously good technologies, but bad people want to get involved with them. Why is that? It's because they know in a lot of ways the tide has turned, and they've held down cannabis as long as they can, and they've held down a lot of other energy sources for as long as they can. They know the toothpaste is out of the tube, and they're going to make sure you continue to buy more tubes of garbage crest, even though you could just make it yourself with some baking soda that analogy for the way this world works is actually a very useful one because you can just make your own toothpaste. One of the other related stories to this, as long as we're talking about double-edged science, glowing fungi research could lead to trees lighting our streets, like the bioluminescence of mushrooms and the like. Which sounds like a fantastic idea until you realize the reality is, oh, you mean you're going to make GMO trees that line the streets and glow which sounds like something out of The Simpsons, which isn't going to be the last time we talk about something that sounds like it's out of The Simpsons on this episode 26 of Good News Next Week for July 11th, 2016. Again, I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Our final story is our cover story this week, and it's something that we followed quite a bit because it concerns our home state of West Virginia. This via Bloomberg. 
DuPont was found liable for a man's testicular cancer in the second lawsuit to go to trial in 3,500 lawsuits over a toxic Teflon chemical found in Ohio and West Virginia waters. This libel verdict for which spinoff of DuPont, Chemours company had agreed to bear the cost. C-H-E-M-O-U-R-S, Chemours. A jury in Columbus, Ohio, returned its verdict Wednesday after less than a day of deliberation, finding DuPont responsible for negligence and $5.1 million in associated damages. It also found actual malice, which means that the company will face punitive damages as well, I mean, punishment. They should be punished and hopefully 3,500 other cases will turn out this way as well. Again, this is another classic case of damaging people, lying to them about it for some product that they can sell to them in stores. Again, they make you sick and then charge you for the cure and you've already paid for the disease. Mangling that analogy, but suffice it to say, this is good news, but who's this Who's this Chemours Corporation I've never heard of before? Oh, there's a good reason you've never heard of them before. It's the spinoff from DuPont that they spun off last summer. It's only been a year, July 2015, that they spun off basically all the baggage to this, what is now basically going to be a sunk company. And of course, all the stocks are all down for both of those companies now, and more about that in just a second. This is basically like Mr. Burns has Canary M. Burns running the plant. There's a dummy that's going to take the fall for all of it. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, all of these companies are reorganizing, whether that's Monsanto or McDonald's, or in this case, DuPont. They are shuffling to survive in the brave new world order that they are hastening to create. And again, the toothpaste is out of the tube. They know that a lot of us are waking up and not taking part in a lot of the garbage that we see going down. They need to control that. So again, a lot of it is a war on your mind. If you've got good news coming down from your town, use hashtag good news next week and you can get in touch with us. And again, if you're not on the tweets at this point, we congratulate you for staying out of the social media network traps. And you can always just email me, james at mediamonarchy.com. A couple of the other stories that we are watching using hashtag good news next week, Crips and Bloods come together in Baton Rouge with a powerful message that all lives matter. Don't expect that to be gone on the 24 seven murder and mayhem purge like mainstream media. Again, these are all double-edged stories. The bullfighter dies. Top bullfighter, Victor Barrio, gored to death in the ring in Spain. Not something to exactly celebrate the death of someone, but like Morrissey said, hooray, hooray, the bullfighter dies because we all want the bull to survive. Netherlands has empty prison problem, the Washington Post writes about, but it's a little more complicated than just black and white. A lot of it has to do to their policing policies, and it's not just simple enough to say, oh, well, it's some, you know, libertarian wonderland and everybody's free to do whatever. It's not really quite that simple, unfortunately. Meanwhile, as a case of Stockholm Syndrome, Texas inmates break out of jail to save the life of the officer guarding them. They were in kind of a little holding tank and they could see that the dude guarding them had a heart attack and was keeling over. So they actually busted out of the cell and saved the dude's life. The only story this week on your good news next week that isn't a double-edged story or a not unmitigated news story, and it's the same way we ended last week's episode, and it's more research showing being good makes you feel good. Five ways that helping others helps you. And the name of the research, and we'll include this in the show notes, and again, everything we say and play is included in the show notes. Pro-social behavior mitigates the negative effects of stress in everyday life. It's the title of a boring white paper, but it can also be the title of your not boring life as we try and use these episodes to learn our way forwards, to celebrate some of the ways we're winning, to share ideas about what you're doing in your own backyard. And again, I appreciate when you leave the comments and share and do all that good stuff as long as we're still using all these controlled social media networks. Again, I do run my own website not controlled by any other thing, and I've done it since 2005. It's mediamonarchy.com support. 
and we are listener supported paypal patreon bitcoin a post office box as i say if i if you can give a little i can give a lot and i do the morning news every weekday morning at 9 a.m pacific time via mediamonarchy.com slash listen and we do a daily dj set at noon as well so that's two live shows every weekday that we do live for free for you and we also of course do the weekly new world next week and the good news next week and all the other hopeful interviews and collaborations that we seek to keep working on and building on this has been Good News Next Week for July 11th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>